Good evening, everybody. It's the last long weekend of the summer, and I was out this afternoon metal detecting this boulevard. I've metal detected this boulevard a couple of times, only because of the interesting history of this area. We're on the side of the river here that was actually owned by a gentleman that was very important to our province here, and actually probably very important to the entire country as he played a very integral part in settling Canada. Yes, it's a very interesting story. This area here that I'm standing in actually was five acres uh, belonging to a gentleman named Augustus Meredith Nanton. He was one of Canada's very first entrepreneurs. He was born in 1860 in Toronto his father was an alcoholic and died very young um, and being 13 and I think he was the second oldest boy. He took it upon himself to take care of the family and through the knowings of his father, his father worked for I think some barristers and possibly, you know, they felt bad for him and, and brought the boy in and let him have a job to earn some money to help his family out. He also took another job, I think, in, um, in a merchant store. And I heard he actually slept under the counter. You know, he did whatever he could. And uh, I thought it would be an interesting story tonight. I'm actually in a large boulevard area of what was once a five acre estate, riverfront estate. I'm just gonna turn you around here for a second. There we go. Yeah, it's beautiful. I think that tree there might be old, but the other ones I think are all fairly new growth in the past 50 years. This one here, I was trying to count the rings, but it was cut so long ago. But if you look really close here, you can see all the rings on this tree. How interesting is that? That's a big trunk. But like I said, I was out here metal detecting the boulevard. I'm just going to show you some of my finds. This site goes back to uh, late 1800s, early 1900s. Quite a bit of coin. I was only out here for a couple hours, but I've got some quarters and some dimes and a uh, couple of nickels and an old penny. I wasn't able to, it's, it, it's a little bit older. It was down quite deep. Got a little buckle there. Oh, and look at these square nails. Look at this big square nail. Huge. Love it. Yeah, I was pretty excited to find those. And it looks like a part to a mantle clock. I got pretty excited when I first dug it up. I thought I actually dug up a pocket watch. But yeah, it looks like a little mechanism for a mantle clock. I'm just going to walk around here. Keep in mind the story that I'm going to tell you is from my view. I'm not... That's the stables for the estate of Kilmore. Let me just zoom in so you can see the beautiful cupolas on there. And those are the original cupolas. They've now been renovating this place into a beautiful home over the past couple of years. Okay. Let's go tell this story. <laughs> Maybe something will inspire me. I've been trying to tell this story now for a few years, but there's so little of the estate left that, you know, I was finding it hard. And I've got all different seasons, winter, spring, summer, that I've been filming this place. Every time I walk by, I come sometimes come to this area for some evening walks, right? But this gentleman was so important to this province and so important to this country, you know. And I was thinking that this morning, about a month ago. CBC has a Saturday morning program. It's a podcast. It's a abandoned Manitoba. And the former president of the Manitoba Historical Society. Yeah, so he's been doing this podcast every weekend. And, and I heard that he was going to be doing the podcast for the estate and my heart just sank right like it was <laughs> like it was my story to be told right and 
and I, I bummed myself out over it and everything. And then this morning, you know, I was re-looking at the, the footage I've had for over the past few years. And I thought, you know, Cindy, how selfish of you to be even thinking that way, right? What's important is that the story gets told. So I actually felt bad. So I thought I'd see if I'd come out here and if I could get a little bit more inspiration. I mean, maybe it's actually just the lesson of, of you know, <laughs> of me being all bummed out and taking possession of the story. And you know what? He did his podcast too, and I listened to it, and I enjoyed it so much. And I actually learned a little something too, because I thought she tore down the big mansion that they lived in because of the depression, and she couldn't afford the taxes and everything. And it turned out not to be the case. See where that big building is? That's where the mansion originally, originally was. All that's left here is the gates, and actually the gates are now protected. It's a municipal historic site and they have to incorporate it into whatever they build on this site, right? And then the gatehouse there and that will be coming down. I was in the house once. They, they did a movie in there one time and I got the opportunity to go in there. Yeah, and they had some beautiful beams and everything. It wasn't as spectacular as I thought it was going to be, but but it, they did have a, a Colt walk-in safe in the basement, and I thought that was pretty neat. But look at this gate. Look how beautiful, look how beautiful this gate really is. Yeah. Sir Gustus Meredith Nanton, he was knighted in 1917 for all his war efforts. He actually gave up 50% of his fortune, you know, in the war efforts and he was Manitoba's one of Manitoba's very first very first um, millionaires too I'm not gonna go on to the property I've got lots of footage of this this property too oh let's take a walk around This is the carriage house. We're not gonna go inside of it, but we'll take a quick walk around. Look at that door knocker, isn't that beautiful? That's a really nice door too. And the house here, this house here is gonna come down, but the gates have to stay because of the historical value of them. But I don't think it will be hard to incorporate them into any landscape because they are quite beautiful. Yeah, it's quite a beautiful spot amongst all these high rises and all these high rises, this would have all been part of the estate. This was the gatehouse. This is where the gentleman who drove the horse and buggy lived in, right? And then later on when cars started running the roads, then it became the, the chauffeur's house. Look at that big piece of metal. Guess to hold the gate open. Can you imagine horse and carriages coming through that gate? Bet you that would have been spectacular. And that's where we were just coming from. So this would have been the driveway because that high rise there, that's what have been, the mansion would have been there, right? Oh, look at all the rabbits.
Yeah, gave so much to this province. Actually, when he died in 1925, he was the president of the Toronto Dominion Bank. He got called back to Toronto when his partner passed away and he took it over. And shortly after that, he passed away. His wife moved back to Winnipeg right away and that's when she tore down the mansion and she renovated the gatehouse to live in. And then she spent the rest of her days living in the gatehouse. But yeah, so I did learn my lesson, you know, because Gordon did do a really wonderful job on his, on his podcast. I really, really enjoyed it. And, you know, there was no reason why I couldn't tell my story, right? Uh, again, he has a podcast and I have a YouTube channel, right? And it's not <laughs> who got to the story first, you know? <laughs> it wasn't like I lost a $40 million deal or anything, right? Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, this is the Nantino, I'll tell you the story.